Okay, good afternoon, everyone. We're going to go over Facebook here today. This is Melissa with the stockswish.com, and I am in the trading room live now and going to have people ask questions about this, specifically because a lot of people in the trading room have been asking me questions about this, some who have traded it and some who have not traded it but wanted to know how I saw the call in this. Let's actually look at today first, okay? Today is actually going to get to the 42. Look, it look. It's going to get to it today. There it is. So the open of the IPO price is 42.05, and I don't see any reason why this won't get there today. And if you were in this, that's the first target for the swing trade. That is the first target for a swing trade. But let's just go over this here today. So with the market, I saw the market bullish today, so therefore Facebook, which isn't a bullish uptrend, it's a continuation. You buy with the market, but you have to wait to the setup. It had a beautiful one minute setup in here. It came down in here. This is not a reverse swoosh. It's a pull in on a one minute chart. You buy it in here. You could have bought it here, put the stop under 60, or you could have bought it here and put the stop under 60. Either way, the stop has to be under the low of the day. You'll never see that today. So the entry could have been right here at 72. 10 cents stop, even with the cushion. Beautiful. And then the first exit, though, had to be somewhere up into here into this first initial run. You take it wherever it comes. And you could even have lowered the stop here and take it up. you got to be out of half in here. You could have been out of half in here and ride the rest into 42 today with the market. But it's getting late now here. It's 11 o'clock. So if you're still in this whole thing, it's hard to hold this into lunchtime because it's going to come down in here somewhere. So there's going to be another buy in this today. Here, here it is. Here's the buy in this today around 41.40 if it pulls in over lunch. I think it needs to pull in that much to be bought again, and it didn't get to 42.05. I don't see any reason this doesn't get to that number today, and if it doesn't today, it'll gap up tomorrow, smack over it, you know? So what I saw this morning that made me think about doing the video um, today on this is that, you know, Gerard was mentioning to me that he was in this for the swing trade. I don't remember where he got in. Where did you get in, Gerard? Did you get in the day of the gap? Because that was the buy. Is this where you were in it, or were you in it here on the third day after, or the second day after? Did you wait for the breakout, or did you take it here? Just after the gap. Okay. So good entry. All right. Looks risky because of the size of this, but this is could not be more perfect. And actually, Gerard did the trends class, so he knows why. But the reality is that he was in this here, and he did take some out here in Friday with a beautiful, nice, fat green bar, and then is still holding some. I'm looking to get out the rest today, but really, when I saw this today, and he was asking me about it, new buying is going to come into the stock when it hits over the IPO price. So actually, you, you could just hold the rest of it here. If you are in this since the day of the gap as a swing trade or a core trade long, you're in it. And you're in it till it gets over and makes new highs. That's going to happen this year. I don't know when, but I'm seeing that new buying is going to come into this year. Now, why am I saying this? First of all, that was the IPO open price. So people that bought in here for a short-term trade will be out. That's the first target. So there were some people that will take profits out here. But where is the power? Where's the side of the power? Where's the side of the directional power? It's up, and it's up now, and it is really up. And when this all happened here, I went back and I said, well, it's maybe too much to expect. It's going to go right to 42 into this rally, which it was. Came down in here, people were saying, ah, no, no, it's still going there. And then it pulled in here beautifully, held 36 perfectly, and rallied. And this is where it's going. So new buying is going to come in here. I just saw this today. What? People that are waiting for it to get there. And then this is the confirmation. Do you see? If you know how to read gaps, this is this is the buy. If you know how to read gaps, this is a buy. You could think in all your life that this is aggressive because the fact is the stock closed in here the night before 2651 and opened the next day at 3354. It gapped up eight dollars plus. So you think there's no way I can buy this in the middle of no man's land. But it's perfect as far as the corrective gap goes, and it's now in an uptrend, it's gonna stay that way with the market. I mean, look, with the market. So this, this, this is a good, solid, nice buy. In a bullish market, a corrective gap, the brand new gap, it's changing the trend. It's a, This is a good, solid trade here. And other people will see that too. People that don't know how to read gaps, though, will not buy this here. Okay? They probably bought it here into the buy setup that happened here. You can see the buying that came in on Friday. 
so new buying came in Friday. You can see it did the lift. And there's going to be new buying that comes in here. And I just saw it this morning. So I thought of doing the video. Why is new buying going to come in there? Because people are waiting. People are waiting for the confirmation. The confirmation is going to come when it boops over the number. When it lifts over and above and through the IPO price, new buying will come into the stock and give it another lift. And it will start to look extended when that happens. But there, so what? Okay? It doesn't matter. This idea of things not being able to continue to go is insanity. Things continue to go. They continue to go. It just started. It's not going anywhere but up. It just started it. 725. It's a month ago from today. It's just getting going. Sure, there's pullbacks so you can buy in it, but the real buy is here. This is the perfect, perfect, perfect buy that you have 100% conviction it won't break, but this is the confirmation buy that new buying is going to come in when it make certain. People say, wait a minute, let's just wait. Let's just make certain because they don't know how to read gaps. This is a certainty, 100%. This is where people like the confirmation. New buying is going to come in the stock when it gets over there. And so anybody that's in this, actually, you could hold it on through. It's going to get a big lift on through there. I don't know if that lift is going to take it right over to break out new highs. It very well might, though, because new buying is going to come in. New power is going to come in. And people that did buy in here will add to the position up here the people that are the power money people. They're not in this to get it to 42. I can tell you that. First of all, a lot of people lost their shirts in here now. All right. And at this point now, they're going to make the money back from this. So you bet your booty they're going to make their money back. When this thing hits over here, they're going to power buy this thing and lift it off. It hits over 50 before the end of the year. I think 100 something, but in a year from now, more buying brand new buying will come into this stock over 42. I just saw it today. So you think it's too extended? No. Okay. So if this doesn't get over 42 today, it's on the horizon. And, you know, the great thing about buying today is the gap is you don't have to do any suffering. So Gerard did the right thing in here. There was no suffering from him. He was up ever since he took it. But people do like to wait for the confirmation. The confirmation for people that don't know how to read gaps is when it gets over the IPO price. And then they say, whoa, finally, okay, this thing is getting the lift. And then they buy. And who the heck knows where they put their stop? It doesn't make any sense to me. I would never take a buy there. But that's where you're already in it. And you're going to get the push off. And you're going to make more money just with the momentum of the follow through up. Okay? So I did call this as a long on Friday. Did anyone do it as a long on Friday? Uh, what did I see on Friday? Let me go back and look. Yeah, it was the 23rd. Here was the entry on Friday. If you bought it here aggressively, you really have to give it a cushion because this is so aggressive. You really have to put the stop on your 90 here. But if you bought it, this was still a beautiful trade with a 15 cent stop. And you got the push up here. Now, if you didn't buy this here, here's your confirmation. It's going to get the lift off today, the way it rallied hard here onto itself. But actually, if you put the stop on your 90, you stayed in the trade. You're in the trade. You're in the trade. Look at this. So here's your confirmation. You buy it here, put the stop on your 90. You're in, it holds. You're in, it holds. You take more in here into the 945 reversal time. You add to the trade and get the lift off. It could have very well gotten to 42 on Friday. It didn't, but it held so strong and so bullishly the entire day. Look at this thing. Didn't even pull it in a 15-minute chart. It power trended all morning up until 10, 30, 11 o'clock and never went anywhere. Never went anywhere. Remember, the market was holding. The market was holding. The market was holding. It was holding and lifted off. And actually, the stock gapped up on Friday. Maybe that's what I saw. Yeah, it was a continuation gap. It was a continuation gap on Friday. That's all. And basically held $39. So it opened right at 39. There it is. I just saw that now. Opened at 39. Boop. It's an immediate buy. It was aggressive buy in the one minute chart. If you did it, put the stop under 90, you're in. You could have, at, here, here's what you do. Here's how you play this. Buy this here. You don't do anything. You get the rally up. Take out 30% of your position. You're profitable into here if this starts to turn red. Let it come down in here. This isn't a great buy setup. It triggered, but it's not fantastic. The good thing about this is that it held the whole number and the gap. So you could have added in here with conviction because of the way that the gap was. It was a better ad than here. Here's a better ad for confirmation. You could add to your trade back in here the 30% you took out in here. And now you're just riding it. You're riding it now to where? To 42. At 42, you take half out. 
You're out of 30% here you made. Half here where you made from the ad you got back in full. Take half out of 42 and you ride the rest then to all-time highs. There's a core trade now for you. You're in it for a year. $50 is the target before the end of the year and 100 in a year from now. So, you know, that's the way you play it. You know, there it is. So Jerry was asking about this. What were your questions specifically on this, Jerry? Gerard did it. Gerard did it. Seems aggressive, but not if you know how to read gaps. And you actually, if you know how to read gaps, you could, you could do it. You know, when something gaps up here in the middle of no man's land and holds, you got to give that weight. And I'm seeing this morning that power buying is going to come in here. I mean, power buying is going to come into this stock at 42. I didn't, I didn't see that before this morning, and then all of a sudden I spotted it. New buying is going to come in because that hit over the IPO open price will be confirmation for people that it's going to be okay to buy this now, that the stock has basically recovered since the opening. Do you see what I mean? So people then will say, okay, this is a safe buy. And these are people that are in this stock for longer term positions, not, not day traders. Okay, these are longer term positions. But this is of all the things that there are to do right now in the market to do, to go long. This is the, and this is the reason I've been doing uh, you know, videos on it. This is one of the best core longer term buys. I'm talking that you could be in for months or a year that I see with confidence and 100% conviction because of the gap and everything else it's doing and with the market. And you're, and you're in this with the market. And when you're in a core trade, I actually think you do have to look at the trend of the market. You're in overnight, so you got to look at the market. I'm sorry, but you do. And that's why you have to learn how to read the trends of the market. You'd like to know why I was so confident in FE reaching 42 very early Friday morning. Because I know that the target on this was 42. So I have 100% conviction it's going to 42 as the first target here. This is the first target. So I'm not talking dream target here, Jerry. This is the first target. And actually, this is not the dream target. You could say this is the first dream target, 45. Next dream target is 50. I was so confident because this is only the first target in Facebook, and it gapped up on Friday. So when something gaps up as a continuation gap since the initial first gap, I'm thinking it's going to go right to the target, to the target. I remember this was against the market in the morning. The market did come in in the morning on Friday and traded aggressively down because it gapped up. Okay, it gapped up and then came down. This showed early on and held the low of the day and didn't break it. And so it showed that it was strong. This is real. How do you know it's real? Continuation from the original gap and the stock's in an uptrend. So because I said 42 with conviction because that was the first target, not the dream target. It didn't get there. But remember, this is against the market all day. It's Friday afternoon in the middle of the summer. So, you know, it did not get there, but it, it basically almost got there today. And we'll see what this does from here. But don't think this is extended. Don't think this is extended at all. This is not extended in here. When this hits over 42, it's going to get new buying. And I don't know if it does that this week in the next four days, but it's coming. It's a coming. Okay. It could do it in a gap. It could do it in a gap. This could gap up again. You think it can't. It gapped up again today. It actually gapped up again today. I'm seeing this now. It opened at 4090. <laughs> It closed at 40.55. This had some overnight buying to give it a lift between Friday night and Monday. Look at that. And the market opened neutral, remember. That specific day because it gapped. That specific day because it gapped. Because it gapped. Because it's a continuation gap. Just like we look at the continuation gaps to the downside and we're looking for our first targets, I'm looking for the first target on a continuation gap. And you could have even said the whole number in here, 40. If you wanted to be really conservative, that would have been it. And remember, like we did with this morning with the, with the Marvell, if we had done this on Friday against the market, I probably would have been conservative. Okay, whole number, first target, 40, then 41 to 42, just because we were against you were against the market here if you did this on Friday. And look at how it held up against the market. Do you see how gaps and their quality gaps do their own thing even against the market? But this was a this was a new gap that happened here on on Friday. I didn't realize it had opened at 39. If I had seen that, geez, Louise. You know, but we had the ARO beautifully on Friday, anyways. But here it is. Okay. So this morning. When I saw this, new buying will come into the stock at 42 because people that do not know how to read gaps, however, who are core traders and position traders and have large monies that they move in the market, hedge funds, our investors, whoever, it doesn't matter, banks are waiting for the stock to come back to 42 to buy it for the confirmation. 
Although really, it's silly. I mean, if you can't tell this isn't an uptrend now, I don't know what you need to know. But some people don't read things in, in the certain trend until they go over pivots. And this is a pivot. This is a pivot. Remember, one person in the middle of no man's land is a pivot or two bars. So this is a pivot. The $45 number is a pivot. More buying will come in over that number too. Because some people are going to wait till that number. Those people have no business probably even trading because <laughs> that's really conservative. And you've missed a lot of profit if you wait till there. But new buy-in will come in at 42 and new buy-in will come in at 45. And what it does between there and then, I don't know. It could have some pullbacks and some opportunities in there. But you got to be careful. If you get all that, if you get an opportunity to get in something and a new gap for a core swing trade or a swing trade and you exit the whole thing and are not going to be in it to the long term, which you might not, not want to be, okay? Because it takes up, it sucks up your buying power in your account. We're in these score trades, okay? Because it's two to one. But if you if you decide to get back into it on another continuation gap, FYI, you have to let it wiggle and jiggle. You've got to let it wiggle and jiggle. It's not the same as the new gap. It's going to wiggle and jiggle, so don't get stressed out. Do you know what I'm saying? You really got to know what you're doing then. If you take a late entry, you got to know what you're doing. The people that are going to buy here and here don't know how to read gaps anyways, because otherwise they'd be ready to be in it. They're not waiting for this confirmation. That's not the case for everybody. You can see this is getting the lift here. People are seeing this is real. A lot of people saw this, and then when it gapped up here, here you see this. So... Anyways, people will do this and put the stop like down here. They'll get in it and put the stop under the pivot of 36. They'll buy it at 42, put the stop under 36. Do you see? But that is not as good of a trade as this guy here. Okay. All right. So this is Melissa with the stock swish.com. This is Facebook. It's August 26. Facebook is going to hit all the numbers and more and, and could produce even more than you think. All of these techie things are getting a lift except for, guess what, Apple. We'll look at Apple then in a bit here too, actually. Let's look at Apple as well. All right. Have a great day, everybody.